Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about distinct and distinct row, otherwise known as unique values versus unique records. And I'm going to show you what they're for, how to use them, and why they're good. Today's question comes from Sabrina in Columbus, Ohio, one of my platinum members. She says, I see unique values and unique records in the query property sheet. What's the difference between them and when should I use one over the other? Well, these are kind of seldomly used properties. Honestly, I don't use them that, that much myself. Um, I pretty much stick to aggregate queries, even though these are definitely better. So I'm gonna probably start using these more in my toolkit as well, but let's go over them real quick on what they mean. First up though, this is an expert level video. What does that mean? Well, that's sandwiched between beginner and developer. So it's like middle ground. Uh, intermediate's too long to spell. <laughs> I call them expert level. Um, so that means you're beyond the basics, but we don't need programming for this. This is all straight SQL. So with that being said, if you're not very comfortable with SQL, go watch this first. This talks about how to use the SQL language in Access. I'll be honest, I didn't consider myself an expert with SQL either until I had been using Access for maybe 10 years. You know, I was mostly just with the query by example grid and, you know, building forms and tables and all that. I knew VB because I was a basic programmer, but uh, I didn't learn SQL properly until I had been using Access for well over a decade. So go watch this. It'll get you started. And also go watch my aggregate query video. Aggregate queries are what I use most of the time, even though distinct and distinct row are more efficient. Uh, aggregate queries are sometimes easier. They're usually easier. So go watch both of these. These are free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch those and come on back. Okay, here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can grab off my website if you want to. You'll find a link down below. And in here, I got a bunch of customers. Let's make things easier for class. I'm going to get rid of all but five customers. Just delete all those guys. Okay, now I'm going to add myself again as another customer, okay? Just so we can get a distinct list of our customers. So normally, if I wanted to do this, I would create a query and I would bring in the customer table. And let's say you just want a unique list of customer names. So I'll bring in first name and last name, and then I'll run it, okay? And I see two Richard Rosts. So to make a unique list, we'll just turn totals on, group by aggregate query, right? And it'll group by the ones that are the same. So if I run it, there's my unique list of customers. And that's just fine. If that's all you want to do, that's okay. But honestly, an aggregate query is overkill for that because there's a lot of overhead behind an aggregate query. All right, so let's turn that off. Let me show you a better way. If that is all you want, okay, you're not going to be doing any calculations. Like normally you could do a sum or a group by or a count over here, right? If you don't want that, what you can do is go into the table properties. What I do is right click back here, go to properties, or you can turn on the property sheet up here, either one. Make sure you click on the background here so you get the query properties, okay? Now there's a bunch of stuff in here, and yes, I cover all of this stuff in my Access Expert course, but two values that we're looking for today are unique values and unique records, okay? Unique values is the same as distinct, and unique records is the same as distinct row. We're gonna talk about what these mean in a second. If you use unique values, turn that on, set that to yes. It's gonna be the same thing that we just had a minute ago with that aggregate query. All right, and if I run it now, there's my unique list of customer names, okay? And the benefit is, is that unique values, okay, or distinct if you, if you come in here and go to SQL view, you'll see it says select distinct. What distinct does is it's much, much quicker than an aggregate query. It's much, much faster internally than a group by because all it literally is doing is just giving you one of each unique record. It doesn't have to worry about count and sum and all those other things. Those actually slow down internally. You're not gonna notice the difference with a database this small that is sitting locally, but if you got a big database that's on the network, this will run faster. Okay, now how is this different from distinct row? Well, let's turn on unique records. Notice only one of these can be on at a time. Unique records makes that say distinct row right there. Okay, and what does that do? Well, let's take a look. Oops, sorry for the beeps there. All right, hit run, 
And now look, I see both Richard Rosts again. Why is that? Well, distinct row looks at the entire row in the table underneath. Every single field has to be identical, even though you only brought these two up here, including the auto number. So that's why distinct row is called unique records. The whole record has to be identical. And in this case, one and 34 are not the same. So those are two distinct records. Same thing with all the other fields, email address, blah, blah, blah. Even if I copy this whole record down here, it's still going to have a different auto number. Okay. So those are two distinct records. Now, why would you want to do that? If 99.999% of all of your tables are going to have an auto number in them, you're almost never going to come up with a completely unique record, right? Well, that's true. But where, you, where distinct row shines is when you join multiple tables together. Okay, let's say hypothetically, let me, um, let me minimize this for a second. Let's say here, I'm gonna get rid of the duplicate me. So there's just one Richard Ross now, okay? And let's take a look at the orders for these customers. All right, orders here, I've got two orders for me. Let's take a look at Jim Kirk. All right, he's got, let's give Jim Kirk two orders. I'm gonna add another order for him. I'll just put any old date in here and some stuff and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I got two orders, Jim Kirk's got two orders. All right, if you look at it now, yeah, all the other customers are still in here. Let's sort by customer ID. All right, so there's, and I didn't sort, I filtered, right click, sort. All right, so I got two orders and Jimmy Kirk's got two orders. Okay, now let's say I wanted to get a unique list of customers that have orders. Okay, and again, you can do this with an aggregate query. I'm just showing you more Legos, different tools for your box. All right, add order T to the query. Make sure they're joined properly. Okay, and I'm just gonna, for the, the sake of class again, I'm gonna turn that unique records off just so you can see what we got. All right, if I run this now, You'll see I got two records for me, two records for Jim Kirk, and then there's one record for each of the other customers that have one order. Because this join, right, says show me all of this stuff and show me the orders where they match. Now, I didn't bring any fields down from the order T, and that's on purpose. Okay, watch this now. Right click, properties. We're going to go back here and set unique records to yes. All right, and now what's going to happen is run it. And look at that. I have a unique list of customers that have placed an order. They show up in both tables, but I'm getting a distinct row from the table that has fields down here. Okay. All right. Now let me pause for a second because this is where a lot of people, including myself, get tripped up. You might be thinking, wait a minute. I've got an auto number in the customer T table. That means every record in there is guaranteed to be unique. So if I have two customers named Richard Rost, each with a different customer ID, then even with distinct row turned on, I should get two Richard Rosts in my query, right? Well, yes, that is the case if you're just running the query on the customer T by itself. When you join in another table, okay, the behavior changes. You're not crazy. This actually behaves differently. This tripped me up for a long time. It's one of the reasons I honestly don't use distinct row that much. So what Access does is it looks at each record in the primary table, okay, customer T, and it says, is this a unique record from that table based on the entire row of data from customer T? It doesn't care how many matching rows are in order T yet, okay? Doesn't care how many orders Richard has. It just looks at the customer T record and says, have I already shown this exact row from customer T? All right, if the answer is yes, even if there's 10 orders over here, you only get one row in the results. So it's kind of creating it like unique values, but it's really unique records, but it's not. I know, it's confusing. Trust me, I get it. Now, if you have two separate Richard Ross records like we had earlier, you will see two different entries for the customer T because those are different records. All right. Distinct row doesn't filter duplicates based on what shows up in the results. It, it filters based on the actual records in the primary table of the query. And yes, 
it's confusing. But this is primarily the only time I ever use distinct row is when I'm joining multiple tables and I want to get a unique list of these people that match to this table. Okay, it's like unique products that have been sold, that kind of thing. And can you do this with an aggregate query? Yes, you can, and I've got videos on it. But this will run faster, especially if you're over a network. All right, well, when you're finished figuring all that out, if you want to learn more about SQL, and it's not all that hard, trust me, distinct and distinct road is a tough, tough topic to master. Uh, but I do cover it in more detail in my SQL seminar, part one. Part one is all about the SQL language, select and where conditions and order by clauses and all the stuff you're going to use in your database on a daily basis, right? Those record sources, row sources, those kinds of things. Part two is all about action queries, append queries, update queries, delete queries, that kind of stuff. And then part three is about modifying the structure of your database, which you can add fields and change indexes and all that kind of stuff. So check it out. I'll put a link to this down below if you're interested in learning more about SQL. But there you go, folks. That is your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.